So uh, again, I appreciate the opportunity for, for coming out to speak with you today. I want to share with you just some of my, my insights and some of my thoughts of how to deal with, with manure storage and, and for, for small farm operations. One of, the, one of the biggest issues as we work with, with landowners, really it doesn't matter the size of the operation, is you know, how are, are, are the right practices chosen? And I've just listed a whole series of things that, that we need to think about. And, and of, of, of course, on top of this is what are the landowner's goals and the landowner's objectives? And we're gonna make sure that we're, we're able to address those, plus all these other items that are, that are listed and, and some things to think about is what, what kind of a waste stream are you wanting to deal with? How much land do you have available? Are you gonna need additional land to, to do the work that, that needs to be uh, done to, to address these, any resource concerns that you may have? And I know that it, it definitely creates some challenges for small farm operations. We, we uh, some additional questions and things to, to think about are you know, what technologies are available? What types of things can, can I do as a landowner? Or what kind of things can, can we as, as technology providers or, or those who, who are providing assistance to, to the field staff, you know, what technologies are out there that they can, that they can utilize? And, and again, we have to take all the different factors and things into account. Uh, but, but then it really comes down to the bottom line. We see the dollar signs. What are these practices going to cost? And what kind of an impact will they have uh, on, on the, the overall operation. So we have to consider those types of things. You know, as we look at, at the various technologies, one of the things, especially with, with NRCS, we like to, to, to look at these, these management functions. And, and we really look at six different functions uh, focused mainly on the, the farmstead area. But I'm gonna be looking at three today that, that we can kind of focus in on these small farm operations. How can we help these small farms uh, address some of these different issues and things. So I'll be looking at some production issues, some storage uh, ideas, and then also we'll be looking at some tr some treatment ideas. As, as we're looking at, at production, there are other things that we have to take into account. We need to look at our animal numbers. You know, how many do we have? What what size of an area do they cover up or cover? Uh, what are the animal types? And those are going to have an impact on the the, the manures and things that are actually produced. Uh, the runoff areas. That, that are there, uh, the, the land application methods. And as we go to the next slide, I, I bring this up to show the, the manure consistencies, those things that we uh, are looking at when, when the manure is actually uh, excreted from the animals, how are, how's it going to be handled? You know, from that production standpoint, one of the things to, to think about is that it, it's usually in that, that slurry range and, and, in, and it's not easily handled as a, as a solid, it's not easily handled as, as a liquid. So we have to think, is there something else we can do? Is there another way of manipulating the, the form of, of our manures or whether that's drying or adding additional water to, to make it so we can actually do something with it from the land application standpoint. So I really like this, this chart. It gives you a good idea of how things are going. Uh, here we have different types of, of animals and, and thinking about the, the, the animals uh, the, the, the production, you know, how are they housed? Uh, that's going to have an impact on the bedding, the manure quantities here where we're seeing uh, swine. Uh, then we do have uh, beef operations. Are they going to be undercover? Are they out in the open? Uh, then then we, we also have uh, goats. Uh, so th this is just showing some different animal types and, and the things that we have to deal with in handling those, those various types of animals. Uh, we, we also have uh, horses, the equine. Thinking about you know how how are they uh, housed and then how are we going to be handling the manures that are actually produced by those animals and then the last one that I'm just showing here is, is dealing with the dairy operations uh, various size of dairies uh, large small medium are they on pasture are they in some type of a housing facility those are some things to think about when you're dealing with your manure production I think what, what, one of the biggest issues that we can focus in on is keeping our clean water clean. That's really e extremely important. And, and just a couple examples here is dealing with diversions. If we can divert any of the clean water away from uh, any of the contaminated areas where there might be some manures or runoff or some of those types of things, that would really be uh, a great benefit. It reduces the volume of materials that you need to deal with. Uh, we're also seeing a roof runoff is something that, that can have a tremendous impact as well. Uh, if we can put on those gutters and keep the gutters and the downspouts uh, working properly, we can reduce the amount of, of runoff that's actually getting uh, into our, our holding areas. 
uh, we can help to keep maybe that solid material a little more solid so we can get that uh, transport out to the fields much more effectively. If you look at the picture on the right, it actually has kind of a, an infiltration or a French drain that, that is used instead of having gutters and a downspout, the water just drops into this French drain and then it outlets. So again, there, there are other options and alternatives that, that you can look at in dealing with these uh, manure management uh, opportunities of help keeping that clean water clean. As we look at some of these possible storage areas, I just kind of show two that, that are similar, but yet they do have the significant differences. Uh, we do have our bedded pack, and, and we're seeing you know, some of that in, in enclosed facilities for some of the beef cattle. Here we're putting in maybe a limited amount of bedding, and, and you're, you're kind of seeing here in the picture that uh, you just add bedding as necessary for, for the operation for the animals. And then the other that we show here is that of the composted bedded pack. Uh, here, that there's a little more work involved, and they're actually composting the material, so you, you have a lot more bedding material, and when, when the animals are, are away from the area, they usually come in and till the area up a little bit to aerate it so that you can continue to get that, that composting action taking place. So again, two uh, storage options uh, for in-house composted uh, bedded packs and bedded packs themselves. Another storage option is, is looking at, at uh, you know, some of these, these liquid uh, storage, we, we can have uh, holding ponds, and, and then uh, if, if you have some, some limitations, such as high water table or limited areas, maybe uh, to look at, at concrete facilities. And I know those, those begin to get expensive, so you, you kind of think, you know, what could possibly be done, uh, and, and if we could go with the holding pond, that, that generally is a lower cost alternative, but again, you have to think about water tables, you have to think about uh, pond sealing and, and some of those types of things. So, so again, these are some storage options that one could look at. If you're dealing with more of a, a dry product and you're, you're not keeping it in the, the, the housing area, you're bringing it out, you know, there's some, some dry stack types of things that, that one could look at. And, and if you look here on the right, one, one of the things that uh, we're seeing a lot more of these, these uh, eco blocks, and, and I guess I, I've heard them called mafia blocks, that uh, you can stack along the, the outside to uh, allow you to have an area to, to store some of your, your, your solid material. And, and as you see here, we've got a, a fairly large one on, on the top, and then there's a smaller one uh, below here. So you can do these with, with uh, almost an infinite number of sizes that, that could be utilized. And, and then we could also go with a covered facility like you see here on the right of, of a litter shed for uh, holding that material and then having the cover to uh, help keep it dry so that you're, you're not uh, uh, making it uh, more difficult to, to land apply. Uh, some, some other options to think about, and, and I guess I would, would put a word of caution for the, uh, if you're looking at the left-hand slide, where, or part of the slide, where we're seeing you know, some of the materials just actually stored outside. And, and that, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but you have to think about, you know, what are some of the consequences? What's going to happen if you have rainfall events? Uh, where would any runoff go? Would we get any type of leaching? So, so again, you need to think about that. If, if that's something that, that you're considering, you have to think about your, your uh, state laws, maybe some local laws and regulation. Uh, the aesthetics is also something to consider. And, and then uh, an alternative to that, if you look at the, the part of the slide on the right, you're seeing a covered slab. Uh, with, with the, they put like a tarp over, over a manure pile. So here we're, we're uh, reducing the potential for any type of, of leaching, and we're also re reducing the potential by covering it, we're reducing that, that runoff potential. So again, here's some options to think about there. So if we do have uh, potential contamination, uh, say runoff areas and, and those types of things to consider, what can we do? Well, here, here are a couple options to, to think about. Uh, what we're seeing on the right is, is one way of dealing with, with leachate. Uh, we can look at, at your, your low flow, high concentrations, where they generally would go out to the, if you look at the bottom of that picture, you're, you're seeing this outlet pipe, and, and then that material uh, then would go into another storage area. Then your high flows, when you have low concentrations, could then potentially go out into a vegetated area. Uh, if you look in, in the, the middle of the slide, you're, you're seeing kind of a catch basin, and then it would, the, the solids would settle and liquids then flow out. And then the, the final picture would be like for a, uh, a milk house area, you can have some of your, your liquid coming out of, the, of these tubes and they would go out onto and flow onto a vegetated area. 
Uh, we're also looking at uh, maybe potential of, of separating some of the solids out. Maybe you want to use uh, some solids for bedding or composting or some of those types of things. Uh, fairly inexpensive uh, applications with, with some, some different types of screw presses. Uh, and then you could even go down to non-mechanical uh, of looking at just this, this settling basin where the manure would fall in this area. Uh, liquid would flow through the picket fence down the pipe and then you'd go in and scoop out the solids uh, as, as, as needed. Another thing to think about, and we're going to spend more time discussing this, is the area of, of composting. And they will be, uh, here we get, have their various options. Here we have a covered compost, so we're, you're able to control the, the liquid level, the moisture level a little bit better. Uh, you have windrows that in, in the middle picture, and then we actually have some bins, so you can look at both uh, mortality and also just manure composting. So here's some options to think of how to, to deal uh, treating uh, some of the material that might be uh, uh, for, for your benefit. Um, I, I like this particular slide because it shows multiple uh, management options that, that you can look at. Uh, we see the covered dry stack, so you can keep your material uh, dry, you can keep you know the clean water clean away from that, and then if you look over to the right, you're, you're seeing a manure spreader. Maybe you need to do daily hauling or haul weekly. Uh, this, this manure spreader would be an option for doing that. And it could even serve as a short time storage, uh, depending on the amount of storage that you actually need. And then we have the, the little settling basin with a vegetated uh, strip there to handle any runoff from that feedlot area. So, so uh, again, I like this particular uh, alternative here. It shows several things, several options that the, the landowner could potentially look at. Uh, just some some just some conclusions as we, as we draw this together. You know, there there are several options, several alternatives of how to address this, and and the one that that they look at the the options that are available. Make sure you work with that landowner. Make sure the landowner knows what these applications are and what impact they might have on their management, their time requirements, a land application, uh, all those types of things. And we also need to understand that not just one option will take care of all of these applications. You're going to need to evaluate each operation to see what alternative best fits them. And then finally, maybe we need to combine some of these options together to actually meet the needs for that landowner. So that, again, that was a quick overview. Thank you for the opportunity. And I would like to turn uh, things over to Chris Wrights now.